un trabajo en especial que en el cual yo he mirado todo su trabajo, pero en el Pero hay uno en particular que me parece súper increíble, que es uno del terror, que se llama The Black Lune. Es uno de los primeros trabajos que yo vi de él. Y recuerdo, no sé si él recordará de que yo le escribí por Instagram, le dije que increíble la película, y ahí es donde me introduje en el tema de su filmografía. No sé si lo puedes preguntar sobre la experiencia y también si recuerdo la conversación. Lucas, uh, John has watched mostly whole, your whole filmography. And he also uh, write to you at your Instagram feed about the Black Rune. A very, uh, a short film, a very long time. So, and that's why, like, they open the gate from John Watch, the, your filmography. So, what memories do you got of this project? And do you remember that the chat with John back in the years? I assume that the I did the blacklist on TV and I've done the black room as the film. So I assume you're talking about the older film first. Yes. yes. Okay. So the black room um, was a horror film a long time ago, of course. Uh, and I'm listen, I'm super honored that you uh, watched that and my other films. Was there a particular question with that? Yes. Do you got like um, an anecdote, a memory? And do you remember when John Gray at your Instagram? No. About the Black Room, back on the years? I do not. I'm sorry. There, I get a lot of various mails about the film, and uh, if you could remind, refresh my memory, I'd be grateful. I will ask John. Recuerdas que le escribiste? Sí. Eh, la primera vez que yo le escribí me dijo, oh, qué increíble que te sumerjas en el terror, cosa que yo hago distintos. Entonces, este, me dijo que gracias por ver. Y en el cual ahí es donde yo le pregunté sobre una producción que él dirigió junto con Just Cat. ¿Tienes el nombre de esa producción? Sería muy bueno que nos hable. El actor, déjame buscarla. Ok, while John is searching for the name of an, an actor, eh, yeah, he in fact, eh, yes, eh, ask you also about the project with George Cat. And I want to know, because you mentioned that a lot of movie has a pro a lot of people has approached to you about this particular project. Why? What do they tell you about the Black Room? Tell us. So just to be clear, I think I heard you say something about George Cat. He's in a very different movie. So he was in a film I did called In Montauk, which was mm -hmm. a very early feature film, a romantic triangle film between a woman who can't choose between two men. I play the artist and George Cat plays the husband. So that's a different movie directed by Kim Cummings. Uh, the Black Room was uh, a horror film that I shot out in Los Angeles directed by Rolf Konevsky. And it was uh, the second time I worked with Natasha Henstridge from the movie Species. You may remember her from there. Uh, and Lynn Shea and a lot of wonderful... Gorgeous. Yes, and a lot of wonderful... Um, sort of horror actresses in particular that Rolf Konevsky is very connected to. And it was a movie about a sort of a, a demon, an incubus growing in the basement of a house. It was a very twisted, dark, kind of sexual film as well. It was a lot of fun to make. Yes, and in fact, John, you're right. He was asking about The Black Room, but he was also talking with you in that chat about that movie with George Scott. So, great. And great because John has do the homework. He has really watched Absolutely. I'm, I'm very impressed uh, with the homework. And In Montauk was one of the first feature films I did uh, playing a lead role. So it really started many things for me. So I have a, a great uh, fondness for uh, In Montauk in particular. It really opened the doors in many ways. Bueno, es un gran trabajo que él hizo también. Este, tus primeros trabajos que yo vi fue un cortometraje, pero eso está en Daily Motion. Pero eso fue hace mucho tiempo que lo vi. Eso sí, no le pregunté, pero sí lo disfruté. Que se llama Man About Town. Es una producción en particular, el primer trabajo de él, así que comentame sobre los inicios. And it's crazy because John watched it on Daily Motion. I think it's your first job. You had correctos. That is Man About Town, man. That's true. That's really, really early. That was my first job that I got when I moved to New York. Um, uh, I come from theater in, I went to Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland, and I did theater there, moved to New York. And uh, the first audition I had was Man About Town. And it was a beautiful short film about a man's last night drinking and last night as an alcoholic, fully drinking. And uh, it ended up winning at Sundance Film Festival with Beth for Best Short Film. 
uh, and it was quite the honor. Um, so that was a really beautiful black and white short film. I'm, I'm amazed you you found it. Well done. I don't know if it that is still on that page. I will ask John. Ese corto sigue montado en esa página. Dice que está sorprendido que lo hayas encontrado. Que ganó en Sundance, por cierto, y fue su primer trabajo después sí. del teatro. Fue una tarea muy dura porque es una producción que muy pocos bueno, conocen de la carrera de él. Pero también hay otra que ni cual ganó premios. Y me sigue pareciendo pues increíble. Yo hace rato lo he querido pues tener en el canal. Entonces hay una que se llama World Star Boy. Es una historia en particular, acción, drama. Entonces, ¿cómo se diga en este tipo de historias? World sí, Star Boy. Esa. Yes, yes, yeah, about World Star Boy. Oh, I hear yes. it. I love the film. <laughs> yes, about World Star Boy. Uh, go John watch it also. And uh, how do you feel be, uh, with this? Uh, we know John told me that you won awards with that one. And it's a very quirky idea, many genres. So tell us, how do you feel with these crazy ideas of these crazy directors well, everywhere? Borst Borstel Boy was filmed in Ireland, and it was about a very famous Brit uh, Irish writer called Brendan Behan. So it's based on his true life story. Um, and that film I was grateful for because I got to work with Michael York, which was, he was a sort of a childhood um, sort of star, or I was a fan of him as a child because I watched uh, uh, Cabaret growing up. And so Cabaret was one of my favorite films still to this day is one of my favorite films. And so growing up in Denmark, where I'm from originally, I watched Cabaret on my little TV there and then finding myself as an adult, suddenly working opposite with him and talking with him on set showed me that really anything is possible. I think John feel the same way talking to you right now. <laughs> and also, it, it's an honor being the translator, by the way. John, no, you creo que... You're doing a great no, job. No, I, I, will, I will tell that. Thank you, and we'll tell that to John. John, creo que tú te sientes ahora con Lucas como él se sintió cuando hizo ese corto, porque él nunca pensó trabajar con Michael George. Yo creo que tú nunca pensaste entrevistar a Lucas. ¿no? <laughs> Tampoco, no, jamás me imaginaba eso. <laughs> el cual es buenísimo <laughs> que le empatizara. Hay un cortometraje me parece bellísimo. Es una historia muy buena, pues obviamente el director no sé por qué no ha hecho mucho más, pero se llama Nini. Entonces, coméntame, eso es increíble. Yes, about the short film Nini, John said that it's beautiful. He said that he's amazed that the director hasn't do a lot of, of, of jobs, a lot of movies. But tell us about Nini. Well, I mean, Nini is a, is a short film. As an actor, you do many projects um some of them uh, make it out there on tv or to cinemas and some of them don't and of course short films are tricky because they don't really get to cinemas so um you can see them in film festivals and then sometimes the director may upload it to uh youtube or a particular website where it's possible to watch to watch the short film and, and Nini was just one of those. I think not a lot of people watched it, unfortunately, but it was a lovely project. But John watched it, and no, I defend that because I work on movie festivals, and we got a special place for short films. I, I agree. I, I, I love short films. For me, short films is is a very special genre because it's the it's not about the money, so there's no compromises to be made. This is your chance as a writer and filmmaker to make your vision be completely true. Once you start making full length films, you probably have to make some compromises to the producers in terms of costs and expenses, and that can harm the story. So short films are truly visionary, I think. Eso sí, voy a serles sincero sobre una producción en la cual él dirigió. Vea cómo son las cosas. En el 2014, bueno, yo estaba un poquito mucho más joven, estaba en la etapa del colegio, yo recuerdo que es la primera vez que yo me introduje en el cine y en, hay un festival que yo, yo me introduje en el Nueva York Vision Fest que él puso en Totedar. Eso es algo increíble que me dejó perplejo. Yo lo que te pregunto al final, no sé, nunca lo comprendí, no sé si eso era real o no. Por favor, si me puedes resolver esa duda, sería muy feliz. Ok, John was telling me that but in those years, when he was younger, he watched in the one of the first festivals in the New York region, Into the Dark. And he want to ask you, he don't, he don't understand the ending, so can you explain <laughs> it? <laughs> Please. Wow, well, so Into the Dark is a special 
love child of mine. It was the first real short film that I wrote, I acted in, and I directed. And I, it's still one of my favorite projects of all time. And Into the Dark, you know, it's out there on various best of sci-fi films that did very well in film festivals. Um, uh, it might be on Vimeo for those of you who want to see it. I'm not sure where you found it, but um, it's out there. And it's the ending. It's basically about two guys going from moon to earth and the revelation at the end, so now I'm spoiling the, the ending of the films for people, but the revelation is that these two people are prisoners, that the moon is a prison. And the way they execute prisoners is putting them in a capsule, sending them back to Earth so that they die in the atmosphere, they burn up in the atmosphere, and this is a death penalty. So that's the ending. That's what you find out at the end, that the whole time they've been talking, they've been going towards their death. Wow. And don't worry, he watched it on a movie festival. I think it's an online movie festival and made in New York. So he watched Vision it in the Fest, proper yeah, way. He's at Vision Fest. Yeah, that was a great yes. film festival. Yeah. And I'm just actually now I'm developing the, the feature for that film. I just finished the screenplay for the feature version of Into the Dark. So uh, we're going to make that hopefully this year. Wow. And that reminds me of a book that I read about some actors that came to the channel. Uh, the husband and wife, uh, Gorman, is called it Vanished Worlds, and they deal with that subject of planets as jails. But wow, this, this, this one, oh, cannot wait for the, for the, for the feature film. I but will tell like that. I, I, I wasn't translated, but I need to translate that part, John. Please, please, yes. <laughs> because John needs to know the, the real ending. Absolutely. John, el final es fuerte. Dice que es spoiler, pero bueno. So, recuerdas muy bien que ellos estaban en la luna, ¿no? Sí. Uh -huh y que pues el final es que ellos son prisioneros en la luna y que cuando son enviados a cuando ellos están hablando es la conversación que tienen su pena de muerte porque la pena de muerte es ser enviados de la luna a la tierra y ellos mueren en el camino la buena noticia, bueno yo dije que eso me recordó mucho a la trama de mi libro, del libro de los, nuestros amigos los Warman de mundos desvanecidos Manichet Worlds, que los planetas son, son cárceles, pero la buena noticia es que se viene largometraje de esta película But, wow. And uh, because the film played in Oaxaca, in Mexico, I had to make it with Spanish subtitles. So I can send it to you with Spanish subtitles. Wow. And a big hi to Mexico. We got a friend from Mexico on the channel. He's not here, but hi to Cesar. Special love to Mexico, man. I need, we need, I need to visit. We are from Colombia, but there's a, uh, yeah, I know, yeah. there's a phrase that tells that Colombia and Mexico are the same country, and we don't feel like this is an offense. No, we are no, like no, brothers. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm only saying it because it means that, that you can watch it with Spanish subtitles. I, I can send that link to you. Thank you. John, que nos va a enviar el link con su título en español, porque él lo hizo en Oaxaca, México. Ahí le mandamos un saludo a César, por cierto. Excelente. Hay que destacar también el trabajo de Lucas en el terror. Bueno, a mi cual me quedó sorprendido porque si en verdad algún pudo, por ejemplo, ser la víctima en este, si no sé, no sé, es como casi la venganza del terror en Slap Face. Entonces, coméntame sobre esa historia. Es crazy because Johnny Stelling me that in Black, the Black Room you were kind of like the victim, but in the Slap Face it was, I know, you, you take revenge. So tell us about the Slap Face. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Slap Face was written and directed by a good friend of mine, uh, Jeremiah Kipp, a very talented both writer and filmmaker. And um, um, he actually worked also on In Montauk. We knew each other from back in those days. Uh, and he wrote a short film first, and I helped being the reader. We went to the same writing group. And uh, I always ended up reading the part of the narrator, uh, And when we finished the reading, I said to Jeremiah one day, I said, listen, although the monster is female, uh, usually I, I'm cast with a relatively nice face. I think it would be interesting if I got a chance to play a monster. And he said, you know, I'll keep it in mind. And so when he made the short film and then later on made the full length film, um, I ended up getting the opportunity to, to play a female monster. And um, As an actor, I, I like the challenge of trying to put myself in, in the shoes of anyone. And in this case, a female monster was quite the challenge. And like Iggy Pot said, uh, I don't feel, I, I don't know how the phrase, it's not an insult that they call me women because wearing women clothes is not an insult, it's an honor. So, wow. Yeah, man. John, fue que 
el director lo conoció en esta película que hizo con George y fue que él le dijo, me, para mí sería un honor hacer el rol de un enemigo mujer, por eso es que hace ese monstruo tan interesante. Es una mujer. Antes de hablar sobre una de las miserias favoritas de Braille, pero antes quisiera preguntarte cómo se involucró con Michael Fontaine. Si va a haber película de Nets, por favor. Si hay una película, te pido. There will be a movie about Nets. Well, that was the plan. It's a, it's a really brilliant short that Mike Fontaine, who uh, does special effects makeup, in fact, every Halloween he does the special effects makeup for Heidi Klum. That's one of the wow. things that he is responsible for. But he's, he's Oscar nominated. Uh, he's really come a long way. And Nest was his first uh, film. And um, there were plans to make it into a feature film. So let's see. I'm very proud of that film, but not many people saw it because... He wanted to preserve the the secrecy of it until he made the full length. So, yeah. I will ask something to John. John, ¿qué duros del maquillaje han estado acá? Carcaglione, esto, recuérdame. Owen Berger. Berger y el otro, esto. Se me Because I'm asking something to John, because it will be great. Uh, send a big hi to Mike, because we got biggest one. I, I know there is a little bit names of makeup, but we got Carl Cagliari Jr., we got Howard Berger, we got John, por favor, el de Walking Dead, me extraña. Gran Nicotero. And the amazing Gran Nicotero. So, a bit high in this channel. We love that art. And no, it will be great to have it here, by the way. But no, kudos that he, he made that long feature. He deserved it because he's freaking talented. He's, he's incredibly he's, talented, yes. And I... And I, and I Beautiful human being. Wow. It will be great. But we will mention it here. John, continúa que, te, que viene la pregunta que más quieres hacer. <risa> Quisiera preguntarte sobre el personaje de Van de Kite de Braille. Es una de mis áreas favoritas. De hecho, el villano no fue el otro. Pues el actor que lo interpretó. Van de Kite fue el verdadero villano de la historia. Y yo no sé, jamás me imaginé. Yo no vi el personaje, pero sí me dejó perplejo que en las tres apariciones que estuvo fue el detonante de la final de la octava temporada, que la verdad jamás me sorprendí. ¿Cómo es de pronto desarrollar ese personaje de Bandicat? Ok, yes, about the Bandicat in the, in the Bloodlist, one of the favorite series from John. Eh, he feels that he's the real villain. He really loves the development of the character. Eh, being like the hanger for the eighth season. So yeah, man, how how was this crazy ride with this character? John lost the blacklist, man. So he will be in yeah. fact, people <laughs> at least have been here. Well, the blacklist is um, you know, it's a huge show. Um, and uh, I was on the show in season four as a different role, as a different character that James Spader kills. And then when they called me in season eight uh, about Elias Van Dyke. I was thinking to myself, I was already on that show and they already killed me. I wonder if they know. So I was a little nervous about doing the audition and I did the audition and I said, listen, I'll, I'll tell them if it becomes a problem, I'll tell them that I was already on. But then when they called me and offered me the part, they said, we know you were on in season four. It's okay. And so I was like, great. And then coming on a show like Blacklist where every single person on that show is incredibly talented and professional is a real gift i mean you can look around all the actors the entire crew are top of their craft so it was just it was terrifying at first and then once you get on set and you start to get to know people and realize they're just hard-working actors or crew like yourself and uh and you can talk to them about the script or the story, you feel like you're part of a family. And that's what Blacklist meant to me. I was um, part of a really large, caring, wonderful, talented family. And it feels like such an honor to be part of a real story that matters to so many people. I mean, I think of all the work I've done, the Blacklist uh, is the show where people come up to me in the street or in the airport or because it shows all over the world. I was just in South Africa. And somebody working at the hotel was like, oh, my God, I know you from Blacklist. And I was like, that's the power of of a show like that, of that, of, of that caliber of Blacklist. It shows all over the world. 
And so it was um, it was incredible. It was a it was difficult. It's a very difficult challenge to do TV than say the black room or any of those independent films we talked about. It's very different because it's incredibly fast and you film with three cameras and the pressure is intense. Everybody's very nice, but there's high pressure. You don't mess up. You can't forget your lines. You have to hit your marks. You gotta, you gotta do a million things at once. And so um, it's not for everybody. It's definitely high pressure. And the Vladis family is growing because we got the lot to interview one of the translators in uh, Latin America. Amazing job. The I think that that show is being translated everywhere. So man. Don't feel surprised. It's, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And and do it. And people do it with passion. I mean, even the translators they embrace it. Sure. Beautiful, man. That's great. Yeah. And I was also on in season nine for the little surprise episode, end of season nine. If you haven't seen that yet, I don't know. I will ask John. John, ¿ya viste la temporada nueve? Porque se viene un spoil. Entonces no te puedo decir. I cannot. I will not spoiler. Spoil that to John because he's already watching that season but so i will translate that part don't worry okay okay yo no te puedo spoiler <laughs> pero tienes que ver el final de la temporada nueve <laughs> por favor estoy de acuerdo ahora antes de poder dar la última pregunta yo pues hay hay una en particular esta serie que se bueno un cortometraje que se llama yumi entonces quisiera preguntarte sobre tu participación en ese cortometraje uh, before we end, tell us about your participation in the short film Dummy. Dummy, oh, sorry. Okay, no, Dummy, yeah. Um, so Dummy is the first film I directed that I did not write. Um, you know, I'm primarily an actor, but I have written a lot. Uh, and I just uh, had my first feature film filmed called House of Abraham. So look out for that. It's coming out this year um that i wrote and i i play opposite natasha henstridge uh, from the black room as well and um so dummy was one of those scripts that came to me where um the writer didn't want to direct it and uh they asked if i would be willing to do it and i had already worked with a team up in seattle where we shot it and that's how they found me and i said listen um i have a lot of experience as an actor and as a writer but as a filmmaker as a director I need as much experience as I can get. So I said yes to the challenge and I worked with the writer. Um, the script was not quite where it needed to be. And I said, if the, if the writer is willing to work with me and try to get it to a, to a place where I understand it, then I can direct it. And so that's what happened. The writer was great. The team up in Seattle led by Ben Andrews was amazing. And our lead actor, Umberto Lenzi was incredible. And so that fest, that film is now going around the festival circuit. In fact, I'm going down to uh, Orlando and Florida to Sanford for Love Your Shorts Film Festival to screen it in February. Wow, and hopefully it arrives to the Circolo Festival in Latin America. Yes, yes, we will we'll definitely see. submit it, yes. Okay, if I, I want to ask you, uh, what is the genre of that short film because the, of, the, of that project? Because I work in a um, festival about sci-fi and horror terror but any, anything in between so maybe it, i can be seen is is that's what's on that's there. yeah this is my genre uh so into the dark the first one i did was sci-fi the next one was horror called the son the father which we didn't talk about but i wrote and directed that and then dummy is definitely in the horror genre and my feature film house of abraham is psychological horror Oof. crossing fingers john solo te diré que se viene su largometraje aparte de este Eh, y está en el horror. Esperemos que lo veamos en algún festival acá. Antes de decir mi última pregunta y una dedicatoria, le pregunto: ¿Crees que la serie Sin Límites, Limitless, merece tener una segunda temporada? Well, uh, before we wrap up, do you think that Limitless deserves a second season? For sure. I thought, I, I think it's a great show. I think the cast is wonderful. And I think. It had so much potential um, for where it could go, um, but unfortunately, I think that ship has sailed, as they say. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, it's sad. Many great series end uh, in a first season, man. So I That's know true. it. That's absolutely true. John, creo que no need to traducir. Sí. Por último, ¿cómo define su trabajo en una palabra? Okay. 
How do you define your work in one word? Intense. And I don't need to translate. Yo creo que no necesito traducir. <laughs> bueno, no. Este es un espacio en el cual antes de la foto, una dedicatoria para Lucas, así que bueno. I hope my English is the best one because John has grown. Uh, <laughs> like, a, the, uh, like a dedicatory is, is, is three paragraphs, so I hope I can do my best. Your ability to immerse yourself in every role with authenticity and depth has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. From the most emotional scenes to the most fearless, you have demonstrated an acting prowess that transcends expectations, giving us performance that touch hearts and steer the imagination. Throughout your career, you have not only been an accomplished performer, but also a passionate storyteller who resonates with audience. Your contribution to the world of film and television has enriched our cultural universe, inspiring generations with your art. At this moment, we want to express our deep appreciation for your dedication to your craft and for enri enriching, I hope it's pronounced the right way, our li lives with your presence on screen. May your acting path continue to be illuminated by the success, creativity, and recognition you deserve. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm thrilled that you reached out. I'm thrilled that we could do this. And uh, what an honor to uh, be questioned by someone who has watched all of my work. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, um, anytime uh, for uh, more questions, feel free to reach out. I'm thrilled to be uh, part of your uh, show. Oh, and this is frozen, man. One moment. Oh, he's frozen. So it's just you and I now. Yes. <laughs> Yo hablo solamente un poco español. Comprende más que hablo, pero uh, mis padres viven en España por uh, años. So, comprendo. <laughs> ¿Me, ¿Me oyen? No te preocupen. Creo que los oía, pero no, la imagen no está. No, te quiero decir, bueno, después de que edites. John, que Lucas, I was telling you that uh, it's an honor to be a translator and I will let that know to John the beautiful words you said. No, dijo John que muy hermoso lo que dijiste y que a la orden para cualquier pregunta y lo que sea, que se siente orgulloso de que hayas visto todo tu trabajo. Yeah, todo su trabajo. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. The photo, we need to take a picture so we can yeah. share this interview. So, la foto, John. Yeah. I was frozen, but for the future. <laughs> oh, oh no. We can do it again. Yeah. No. We got it? Yo? Okay. Yes. Yes. It's uh, good. Eh, este es tu espacio para que digas tu red social. Un saludo para Colombia. Invita a la gente a seguir tu trabajo. Look at the camera is yours. So you can say to your social media so people can follow you. Say hi to people from Colombia. Invite people to watch your movie. The Vladis, go ahead. Please follow me on Instagram, Lucas Hassel. I'm sure my name will pop up somewhere. L-U-K-A-S, Hassel at Instagram. Uh, follow this uh, feature film of mine called House of Abraham. It's coming out. It's going to be exciting. I'm very proud of it. And uh, in general, just, you know, uh, always reach out on Instagram. If you like my films, if you have something to ask me, I usually respond. That's how this interview came to be. And uh, this is how you make fantastic friends all over the world and definitely in uh, Colombia here. So I hope to visit your country um, sometime in the future. It will be an honor. John, que ojalá venga a Colombia. Eh, por favor, y que gracias. Y hombre, gracias por hacerme cumplir un sueño desde la adolescencia que quería conocerte. John is telling, it was a dream from his adolescence, adolescence years when he, he has watched everything. So, cool. Wonderful. 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 God bless and you, man. Have a good time. Yeah. So, Good night. Thank you so Good much. Night. Good night. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.